Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Christ the Cornerstone Church. We're glad you could join us this morning here physically in our sanctuary. Those that are watching on Facebook, we welcome you. And those that are listening, thanks for joining us again today. We have a few announcements, and then we will enter into a time of prayer and worship. Speaking of which, tonight at 7 p.m., we're having a special service here. Uh, thank you. It will be prayer and worship, so bring your prayers, your concerns. We're going to leave everything in God's hands tonight, and just come be amongst us, feel God's presence, and watch God change things in our world and in your life as well. So tonight at 7 o'clock, hope to see you tonight. Uh, 6 o'clock. Has it always been 7? I think it's been 7. 7 o'clock it is. 7 o'clock. 7 We'll, look, we'll figure that out <laughs> later. Wow. Okay, so moving right along. I'll put a Facebook post to let you know. <laughs> so are we deciding on 7 then? No, that's fine. 7 o'clock tonight. There it is. Flying by the seat of our Holy Spirit pants here. Great. All right, excellent. Tonight at 7. Come join us. Mm, boy. Tuesday at 10 a.m., that's correct, huh? That's correct. Uh, there will be our food pantry uh, here. If you, you or somebody you know needs food, it's a drive-up uh, type of situation where we give out food, and it's about from 10 o'clock in the morning to about 11.30. So uh, spread the word about that for this Tuesday. Wednesday night is our Bible study here in the uh, Fellowship Hall. We're going through the armor of God, and this Wednesday we will cover the breastplate of righteousness. So you can join us at 7 o'clock, whether or not you've been here before, join us for that opportunity to understand more about God's weapons that we can use to defend ourselves against Satan. Also, we have a membership class that's coming up September the 26th and October the 3rd. Those two weeks, we're going to have membership class with Pastor Jamie. So if you'd like to be a Cornerstonian officially and like to join our church in our mission and vision, uh, see Pastor Jamie, and hopefully you can become a part of this great work that we have here. Let us pray. God, we thank you for gathering us here today. We thank you, God, for all that you continue to do in all of our lives, Lord. We ask you, God, to be with us, to guide us, to direct us, to let your spirit fall upon us. Help us change and grow more and more into your likeness. Empower us all, Lord, to be more of who you want us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Good morning. I have no idea what time it is. <laughs> but it's time to worship. That's right. It's time, if you would, please join me in singing this morning. Oh, there it is. I dusted off this old song. You guys know this one. We talked about God's faithfulness Wednesday.
goodie isn't it that's an oldie but a goodie and here we're going to teach you a new one see what I did there got an old one now we got a new one all right I want to teach you guys the chorus before we get started if I can remember it you are yep that's it all right go oh, you're at it well done slide lady so this one goes like this you are the only king forever almighty God Got it? You are the only king forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only king forever. Forevermore, you are victorious. You are the only king forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only king forever. Forevermore, you are victorious. All right, you guys got that, right? All right, let's go. You're going to have to stretch. Dawn. You need to stretch you, on this, this one, This one's too. a good one. You're going to probably put your hands together. Shake it out. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got a firm foundation. Our rock, the only solid ground, as nations rise and fall. Kingdoms once strong, now shaken, but we trust forever in your name, the name of Jesus. We trust the name of Jesus. You are the only king forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only king forever. Forevermore, you are victorious. You are the only king forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only king forever. Forevermore, you are victorious. You are the only king forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only king forever. Forevermore, you are victorious. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only king forever. Forevermore, you are victorious. You are the only king forever. 
Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. Amen. He's victorious, right? He reigns forever. You may be seated. I think they like that one. I like that one. I like being on a winning team. <laughs> team Jesus. You can never go wrong. You can never lose. Yeah. And it'll take good care of you, all of us, all the time. What a glorious God we have. Wonderful. It's time for our opportunity to give now we our tithes and our offerings this morning to continue to sow seed into this ministry and ministries and missions that we have, to continue to preach the name of Jesus and help people find true love and mercy and grace and everything and anything they need for their life to expand and grow. And this morning, uh, scriptures come from Mark chapter 4. Jesus said, here is an example of an illustration of what the kingdom of God is like. A farmer planted seeds in a field, and then he went on, on, went on with his other activities. As the days went by, the seeds sprouted and grew without the farmer's help because God produces crops that people sow their seeds with. First, a leaf blade pushes through, then the heads of wheat are formed, and finally the grain ripens. And as soon as the grain is ready, the farmer comes and harvests all that wheat and makes bread with it to feed people. That's the, what the kingdom of God is like. So every time you sow into this ministry, the seeds that you plant financially are planted, and then God makes it grow. And what makes it grow is, is God's power, God's love, God's ability to provide for all of our needs. And ab above and beyond that, what the seeds are are souls brought to salvation people's lives change and transform and change for eternity. So every time you sow into this ministry, the, the seeds that we are planting are lives that we, will hopefully continue to grow. And you might start off small. You might start with your faith being a blade. Before you know it, you're full grown and God takes you and you become a vast harvest for which people can feed on your faith and your love and your, who you are as, as a Christian. So this morning, as you give, you can use the website if you'd like to. There's a safe place there on the donate page. You can use our link there. Um, you can use our mobile app. You can also send a check, write a check, put a check into the, um, or cash, whatever you'd like to send to the church. Know that as you're doing that, you're sowing seeds, and we're going to watch God make it grow as people's lives are changed and transformed. So more miracles are yet to happen because of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us pray. God, we thank you that you planted your heart into our hearts. You've changed our minds and our souls, and you've given us eternal life that begins now all the way out forevermore, Lord. You've given us victory over everything and anything, including death, and we thank you for that, God. And we know, God, that there are more and more people who are in need of hope, in need of mercy, in need of forgiveness, and in need of love. And God, we know that this church is the church that speaks the language of love, your love, Lord. So we ask you, God, to continue to bless our ministries, bless the ministries and the missions in the El Tamarindo particularly. That's the second offering for this morning, God. We know that the seeds we have planted there some 28 years ago, Lord, and even before that for other missionaries, those children's lives and who are now adults have been transformed by you, God, and we thank you for that. So we thank you for the great harvest of souls brought to eternity because of this little church of many good works, and we thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen.
going to continue to praise our Father and our God through prayer. That's one of the biggest things that you can do to praise the maker of everything in you is to acknowledge that God is and always will be and that everything that we do, everything that we're going to do, and everything that impacts our lives, we're surrounded by this loving Father. And so let's continue this praise and give God everything we got, those worries, those joys, and all that stuff in between. God wants it all because God just wants a relationship with you. So let's bow our heads in praise. God, we praise you with our prayers. We acknowledge, God, that before we even speak these things out loud, that you're already in them, God. And that is extremely overwhelming, God. So we praise you for that. We praise you for that grace. We praise you for the unconditional love that falls upon us, God. We praise you for our discipline, God, to help us to be more obedient. <laughs> that is a sign of love. God, we lift up these prayers. Prayers for all affected by 9-11 and its aftermath. Prayers for peace, love, and unity to prevail. Prayers for all who are sick with COVID and all other diseases. Lord, we send your healing to them. Prayers of peace of mind for those struggling with mental health issues. God, praises for all the miracles and unanswered prayers. God, prayers for harmony in all relationships. Lord, we pray for Ruth for health problems. Prayers for Cindy for a state meeting coming up on Tuesday, September 14th. We pray that her scores are good and that she passes her meeting, God. Lord, we pray for Dee to continue healing and to feel better. God, we lift up these prayers in this book and those prayers that are sitting on our hearts and minds, God. God, we pray for your healing to fall upon us, God. Grief, God, comes in so many different forms. And every time there's an anniversary of something, that grief is relived, God. And right now, there's a lot of people in our nation going through that from 20 years of 9-11, from passing of friends and family with COVID, cancer, other diseases, God, that are coming up on anniversaries. God, we pray that we turn to you and that we acknowledge that you're within our midst during that grief and that it not be something that separates us from you, God, but draws us closer. God, we lift this up. We lift anybody that's struggling with that up in your prayer, up into your arms right now, God. Lord, sincerely pray that each one of us and those that are struggling certainly turn to you sooner than later so they can find the, the peace that can only come from you, God. In your precious name we pray, amen.
worship you. Oh, I worship you. You are here. You. you are here working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are here touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker.
miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Amen. That was pretty heavy this morning, pretty powerful this morning. So we're going to pray for a second, and we're going to pray over Pastor <laughs> Joyce, because she now has to bring forth the word with all those emotions going around. Dear God, <laughs> how overwhelming you are, God. How overwhelming you guys are, God. that you permeate every single aspect of our lives, God. That through tragedies, you were there. Through our highest mountaintop moments, you were there. How overwhelming is it that, that, that you want to be our friends, that you want to be in relationship with us, God. You aren't just the king that reigns over and looks down upon us, God. You look up upon us. <laughs> you want us to be with you so much so that you went through sacrifices to get us to the point where we are today, God. And we don't even know the depth of those sacrifices. We can't even begin to understand them and what you've done, what you're currently doing, what current sacrifices you are making just so that you can have a relationship with each and every one of us because we are all so important to you, God. God, and as we're here today congregating to praise you, to worship you, to become better Christians, God, we pray now upon Pastor Joyce, who's going to bring the word forth this morning, God. May her lips speak your words. May our ears hear your message. May our hearts be open to be obedient and take action upon hearing your words and your message, God. In your precious name, God, we give it all to you. Amen. I know each of us have been through tragedy, have been through triumph. I know each of us knew where we were on September 11th. I knew where I wasn't. I was supposed to be there, Becky and I. A good friend of mine on the 84th floor had 50 some odd employees. They weren't there either. All because God chose, for whatever reason, to spare my life, Becky's life, her mother's life, my friend Deb's life, and all of those people on the 84th floor. And as COVID has come upon us, I continue to see and hear about and pray about and done memorial services for people who have died of COVID. And in between all those other things, there were the wars and so many souls lost to all the wars that have hit humanity because humanity just can't seem to love each other the way God does. So evidently God kept me here for you. Aren't you blessed? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I used to wonder, and I had survivor guilt for a while, and I used to wonder why, but God had a reason. And there's so many reasons why all of us are still here, because you're here too. <laughs> it's not just me. All of you are here, all of you that are watching, all of you that are listening. God 
has a reason for you to still be here or you'd be with him. So when you understand the fact that all of us have been saved by grace, all of us, for whatever reason, whatever stupid things I've done in the past that God saved me from, and all the smart things I thought I was doing that God saved me from, God saved us all so we could continue to march on with the message of love and bring love and light into our world somehow, some way. And we are ready to keep continuing to prepare people for the second coming of Christ. All the things that are going on and have been going on, as we look at them, Jesus spoke it so well in Matthew and said, Reader, pay attention. Pay attention. Get your heart right. Know that the days can be shortened. And at the same time, he said, I promise I'm coming back. And when I come back, I'm going to bring peace and, and eternal life on this planet once and for all. And until that happens, keep preaching the message that there's forgiveness of sins through Jesus Christ. Preach it to all the world so everyone can know the beauty of having a relationship with Jesus Christ. So evidently the message must continue to go on that we that are here, all of us have a purpose on this planet to do God's work. That's why we're here. You weren't born to be a doctor, a lawyer, or an Indian chief, or, or a car salesperson, or any of those other things that you think you, a banker, or whatever it is, a pharmacist, whatever it is. They're all great professions. But the reasons we have those type of work and do that kind of work is for a greater purpose very often. The people that you're in contact with, because we don't live on an island, all of us have contact with some other people, don't we? And all of us can make a difference in somebody else's life eternally. And that's what it's always about. So as the book of Romans tells us in Romans 12, it says, Dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give yourself to God. Give yourself to God. Be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind that God will accept. When you think of what Jesus Christ did for you and for me and for all of us, is that too much to ask? <laughs> Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Changing the way you think, meaning this. Life is not what the world wants us to say it is. This world is so transitory. It's here today, gone tomorrow. People are here today, gone tomorrow, are they not? But the question is, what do you leave behind? What do you do to make a difference to other people? How do you transform other people's lives for the better? That's your purpose. Just like Jesus had the same purpose, to change people's lives for the better, to improve their life, in the here and the now, but also in the future. So are you ready for change? Are you ready for change? Now, are anybody here ever anxious about change? How many of you can't stand change? How many of you? Okay, so wonderful. So you're going to have to change that. You're going to change that perspective about change. Because think about this. Change is necessary for growth, is it not? Right? What would ever happen without change when you think about it? Okay, so I wouldn't have gray hair. That'd be an okay, not change. <laughs> but think about this. How does nature work except through change, right? Think of the seasons. Are you a little bit tired right now of the heat? Wouldn't you like a change in the season here in Florida to a little cooler, right? <laughs> would you like that aspect of it? You know, I mean, I don't know about you, but you can't digest your food without change. Did you know that? And if you don't digest your food properly and it doesn't change from the, what it started out is and becomes something else, you're going to have a problem. Are you not physiologically speaking? Not to gross you out or anything. But I'm going to tell you, the body needs to change things. It transforms things. The food you put in turns into energy, by the way. It helps us 
have our muscles, all the things, our heart, all those parts of our body is perfectly changed by food going in. Change is good, is it not? Yes. You can, you can, change is wonderful. <laughs> I mean, think about all the things. If you look around here, if you notice there's some wood in here, right? Do you know what you, yeah, there's a wood, ta there's a, actually, the, the altar's made of wood, and the doors are made of wood. If a tree didn't change, would we have a door or an altar? See? Change is good, right? See how important that is? It's the nature of God to change, to make things grow, to make things blossom, and, and so forth. We go from winter to spring to summer to fall, and it keeps on going, right? the way God makes things be. All things must change, including whom? Yes. Yes. And if you notice in Romans 12, what did it say we needed to change the most? The way you think. <laughs> the way you think. What you think in your mind, whether it's positive or negative. Listen, if you want to move uphill and change and grow, how many of you want to do that? Everybody's hands go up. Thank you very much. You're helping me along this morning. I appreciate it. <laughs> you can't climb uphill thinking downhill thoughts. You can't climb up a hill thinking about, well, how hard it is and how far it is and how awful it is. And before you know it, you're going to get halfway up the hill and what's going to happen to you? You're going to stop. You're going to say, I'm going back down. For what? You're going to miss the view, right? There's nothing more beautiful than getting to the top of a mountain and looking out all over the places around you. Sights you might have never seen before are seen best from a higher level, are they not? when you really think about it. We're here on the ground all the time, and you know, if you're always looking down, all you can see is the specks and the rocks and the things that are maybe not that interesting. But if you're looking up, you see the sky, the birds, you see the sun, you see eagles soaring, right? You see activity, you see movement, you see beauty, right? It's what you're looking at that matters so much and what you think about what you're looking at, correct? How we see each other right now is a problem for most humans today. We don't see each other as God's creations, as God's beauty, as God's uniqueness, as God's diversity, as God's spectacular masterpieces that all of us are. We very often only see the differences in each other, and we don't think those differences are great, do we, sometimes? We want to compare, we want to contrast, we want to say, what's, you know, is this person a part of my group, therefore they must be good. You see what happens when we have biases like that? You miss the whole rest of humanity and all the interesting facets of them and the beauty that God created them to be. Some people, anybody here like brooks? You know what brooks are? Rivers, lakes, oceans. Do you like them all? They're versions of what? Water, right? Water. Some waterfalls, right? Are any of them any different? Yes, they're all different. Are they not? Are they made of the same stub substance? Yes. Water. Some has salt, some doesn't. It's salt-free or salty. <laughs> but it's all what? Water. We're all the same. Do you see what I'm saying? We're all human beings with a heart and lungs and blood flowing through us. We're all the same in the same image and likeness of God. Just some of us are saltier than others. <laughs> uh. So the scriptures tell us that we can't think like the world thinks is what I'm trying to say here. You, you have to think the way God thinks. You have to look at people the way God sees them. You have to want the best for others because that's what God wants. Well, you have to love people because God loves them. Whether they're lovable or not, you love them because God loves them and Jesus died for them. Our purpose is to enhance one another's life and to bring light to it, to bring joy to it to help people feel better about themselves, not worse. 
And some of you think way too lowly of yourselves, if I may go there. Every time you put yourself down, you're also putting God down. Because you're made in God's likeness and image. Likeness meaning his character. Inside of you is God's spirit, which is a spirit of love, spirit of power, the spirit of goodness, right? That's what's inside all of you. So you need to spiral upward. Anybody here ever had, you know, spiral down? We, we know how to do that one, right? Gravity kind of works against us even in our mind, right? If you, get on a, if you get on a thought train, I don't know about you, but sometimes I get on a thought train, woo, 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 right? And it, it's going in the wrong direction sometimes, and it's, you know, you're going down, 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 right? I don't know about you, but how you want to get off that train? You ready to, like, uh, exit? <laughs> Let me get on the upward spiral train. I think there's a song. I'm not going to sing it, although Pastor Jamie's leaving, so maybe she thinks I am going to sing it. But the song goes like this. <laughs> it's about higher ground. About higher ground. Let me stand on higher ground. I'm not going to sing this song, but it's going to run in your head later. Some of you will probably Google it or whatever and look, up, look it up on Spotify or all those other places you listen to. Lord, place my feet on higher ground. We, we need to continue to move upward in our thought process too, right? Does anybody here know what a positive thought is? You, rec you know what one is, right? You, you, you've heard them? You've heard other people say them perhaps? All right, so you know the difference between a positive and a negative thought then, right? You do? Okay, so what are we going to do with the negative thoughts? <laughs> Throw them away. You dissipate, or that's a big word I know, you essentially waste your time and energy on negative thoughts, put it, put it mildly, and or you also can cause yourself to go down the wrong road of where you could be, right? You lose energy with that, and you, and, you, and you just find yourself in a place that you get yourself stuck because if you spiral down, you, you, what essentially happened is it's like quicksand of the brain, and you're sinking lower and lower, and you're singing, Lord, place my feet on higher ground. On the muck and the mire, I'm down here. And what God gives us is the power to control even our mind. Did you know you could do that? Do you practice that? Do you actually do it? Much of what we think about is unnecessary, unhelpful, and unfocused, if you think about it. Squirrel. If I wanted to upset everybody right now, I could really do that. You know I could, don't you? I could bring you down just like that. One or two words. Ready? Or I could bring you up, can I? Oh, what makes me so powerful? It's the power of the words. It's the thoughts we think. Thoughts then lead to our actions, do they not? If you want a better life and, and to be transformed into the likeness of God, who Jesus Christ was, the miraculous God that he was and still is, you have to transform your mind and your thinking processes. You have to believe and come to know that you are a healer just like Jesus was. You can be the healer of your own life. Do you believe that this morning? If you think you can. We're going to cease some things today. Okay, are you ready to cease some things, stop some things? We talked about stopping thinking before, but now we're going to cease some things. How about you cease useless thoughts? If it isn't useful to you or to somebody else, how about you stop it? How about when the train starts going in the wrong direction, you say, oh, no, hold on, stop. You pull the little chain. I'm old enough to realize how you can do that even on a bus trolley, I should say. <laughs> We're going to
going to turn to Philippians 4 now, or 3, I should say. Here, here's, I'm going to turn it around now, see? You can't think differently if you don't over here at the beginning give your life to Christ and put yourself in his hands and ask him to change your thought process. So that's the first step that has to happen. Also, what also has to happen is you also have to ask, once you've done that, you say to him, what would you have me do with my life, Lord? What's my purpose here? What am I here to do for you? When you realize your purpose, whatever it is for each and every one of you, you'll realize that God will use you in magnificent, awesome, miraculous ways. So much so that even when you should have been at a tragedy, God saved you from that so you could then teach other people about how, how to have a fulfilling life through Jesus Christ. That's how much you all matter. Do you understand what I'm trying to say here this morning? I understand my purpose. See, I'm blessed with that. You have got to find out what your purpose is as well and make that the most important thing that you do. Too often... In the race of life, we're worried about other things that don't matter at all. You have to get your thoughts in order by understanding what your purpose is. Because when you have a purpose that's above and beyond you, and it's for other people, and it's meaningful to God, you will be so full of energy and only the thoughts that come into your mind are how you can continue to serve God in a greater way. And on the other side of that, when adversity comes your way and problems come your way and other things come your way that try to distract you and dissuade you and hold you down and hold you back and the negative thoughts do come to all of us, right? We all are plagued by that, yet we say stop. I've got work to do for God. I ain't got time to pay attention to you right now, Satan. There's bigger, greater work for each and every one of us to do. Souls are at stake right now. This is important work that we're doing here in this church, and it may look like we're just your average, ordinary church. For whatever reason, God has chosen this specific church to do great and awesome works throughout the world and even through Facebook, and through our website, and all the other ways in which all of you individually are touching people's lives, making a difference to the quality of their life eternally. This is big work we're doing. This is important work we're doing, is it not? So we don't have time to argue and be negative and think about, all the other things that are going on in the world. We're going to stay the course. We're going to keep preaching the word of God. We're going to keep loving people who are unlovable. We're going to keep forgiving people the way they need to be forgiven. We're going to show people what God's love is really like by accepting and loving every last person who ever walks through these doors or anybody that needs us in any way, shape, or form, however and wherever they come from. And whatever they look like makes no difference to us. Right? Hmm. Those who dwell on useful, uplifting thoughts are true ministers of God. So here, let's focus on what's important going forward, okay? Give your attention when it's something great. Give it your full attention. When it's something little and doesn't matter and will not even matter five years or 20 years or 30 years from now, stop paying attention to it. Pay attention to only the things that are going to transform another person's spiritual, emotional, physical, mental, or any other way of their life. Use your mind in positive ways and create positive change. 
We talked about change when this began. The world has changed so much for while all of us have been alive. It's going to continue to change, is it not? It could very well get worse. Sorry to say. And if it does, what's going to happen? We're going to keep loving people, preaching the good news about Jesus Christ, and bringing people into eternal life as much as we possibly can. Feeding their hearts, their minds, and their souls, and their physical being. And we're going to wait for the Lord's return, whenever that is. When's it going to happen? Don't know. That'll be a good day of change, will it not? In the meantime, find out why you're here at this time, at this place, in this specific church. Because the church is you. We, as pastors and leaders of the church, we can only do so much, can't we? We need all of you through understanding we have one purpose, which is to bring people into eternal life with, in a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the beginning for everyone. So that whether they're here today or gone tomorrow, we know where they are in eternity. And in the meantime, we can help people through the positive words and actions that all of us have for each other and towards each other. We can then lift other people up, can we not? Oh, Philippians 3. I'm sorry, I was went off on a whatever. Philippians 3, verse 13 and 14, two short verses. I... Focus all my energies on this one thing. See, you notice what Paul's even writing about? For, you know, he focuses on one thing. We all have to be about the one thing. Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Strain to reach the end of the race and receive the prize for which Christ Jesus has offered it to us. Meaning this. We're in a race for bringing our own souls to the end of the race of doing our purpose. See, when your purpose is done and all the people that you are here to touch, that work has been done, then you can know you finished the race, right? You don't get to leave the race just because people aren't being changed. There's that other part of things. Because we can't control that, can we? Who has to change the most? I do. And that only happens by forgetting the past, the past mistakes, what you used to do. You're only as good as your next sermon. <laughs> You're only as good as God is continuing to help you become, finishing the race of the work you're called to do. So we're going to stop thinking negatively. Negatively, correct? Yes. You're going to focus on the greater, better things that you can do in service to others, correct? Yes. You're going to call yourself someone who God has saved by grace as someone that can be used by God to spread God's love. That's our main function, is it not? And if you're not good at it right now, Pray that God will help change you so that you can become more like God. I guess I have to say this. If you haven't already given your life to Christ, I implore you to do it now. And, when I don't, and I'm not just saying, you know, say the prayer, I'm a sinner and the Lord died for me and, and, you know, I know he forgave my sins and Lord come into my heart. It's more than that. That's the beginning. Yes, he'll come in. But you also have to say, Lord, change me. 
into the person you want me to be. And use me. Once you've changed me and put all of yourself into me, use me, God, for the greatest good for all humanity. That's a big ask, isn't it? And who's all of humanity? Anybody you come into contact with. That's our humanity. The beautiful thing, sadly, about tragedy is this. I hope and pray it gives you a joy and a thankfulness for life itself. To be still here. To hear and see and feel all that life has to offer. To have relationships with one another that are valuable. And every life is valuable, is it not? And treat yourself as such then. And treat others as you want to be treated. I think that's in here too. So you ready for change? If you really are, spend some time alone with God. An opportunity will be tonight. We'll be here. Music will be playing. We'll be in God's presence. Ask God to reveal to you what it is inside of you that God wants to change. Release to God the things that no longer serve you or are no longer a part of you. Ask God to cleanse you of everything that's not of him, especially negativity. And stop worrying about what the world's doing. Just get in touch with your purpose. Stand strong to that. Realize you're here for a reason. And that reason is other people, like it or not. Anyone and everyone who's ever sacrificed their life for another cares more about that other person's life than their own. And we don't have to go to that level sometimes of sacrifice, although many do. But can you sacrifice 10 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour, five hours, a week, a day, a month, a year, a lifetime to the devotion of other people and their well-being, their spiritual growth? Can you do that? The only way how is that if you give yourself 100% first to Christ and say, here I am, send me. And then the places you'll go, the people you'll see, the lives that you will watch change and transform your life will be all those spectacular, beautiful experiences that you can't measure and they're priceless. So although we continue to see that grief is just plaguing our country and our world, and there's so much darkness right now, but you, my friends, you are the light of the world. It's time to stop hiding your gifts and your talents and your spiritual selves and who you are and your greatest ability to love other people in small and big ways. It's time to take the way that you think about who you are and see it the way God sees it. You've been all called to do a great work for God. All of you. Are you ready to get on about it? Are you ready to change some things in your life, your priorities perhaps? Oh, I've got two in the front. Okay, beautiful. <laughs> I'm going to see it. I'm going to hold you to it. Change the way you think first in terms of your insignificance, which is a negative thought in my view. You're so valuable to God that he saved you. He's still saving us every moment of every day for greater works than he's ever done. I can't wait to see all that you accomplish and the lives that are changed because of you. So you ready to change?
Ready to change from this room to wherever else you're going? Are you going to, in the meantime, realize you have a purpose? There's something for you to do in this life that you never realized that God wanted you to do, and you're going to find out about it, and you're going to do it? You're going to worry about no one else and what they're doing? You're going to only do your thing because God has created you for a special, unique purpose, correct? All right, Jesus has big things for all of you to do. We're all in this together, are we not? What an awesome church we have. Am I right? I'm always right, I know that. (laughs) I'm right about you. Greater things are coming. In this darkness, there will be light. We will be that light. And as that light shines brightly into other people's lives, they're going to wonder, what's... What's that? Where's that light coming from? We're going to realize it's coming from all inside of all of you. And they're going to want a part of that light too. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God, we thank you so much for gathering us here. We thank you, God, for seeing us through all the aspects of all of our lives. Every person here and all those watching or listening, all of us, God, have come through so much to be here today. And we thank you for that, God. We thank you that you've kept us here for a mighty and great and awesome divine purpose, Lord. We know that there are greater things yet to be done in us and through us, Lord, to help change our world wherever that can be and however that can be. Even if it's one person at a time, God, let us be the ones that bring light into their heart into their soul, into their mind. Let us be the ones that bring them to you, Lord Jesus, so their life can be changed and transformed eternally. Use this, God, to continue to proclaim the good news that you love us all, that you forgive us all, and you want to use us all to share your love to all humanity. Help us each, God, change every single day to be more and more like you. What a beautiful change that will be. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. We love you. Thank you. See you tonight at 7 o'clock.